Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this woven wire kumohimo bracelet. So we'll be making a basic kumohimo braid and then adding this woven effect afterwards. And you can really make it stand out by using contrasting colours of wire. Now if you like wire kumohimo tutorials, I do have loads more on my channel. But in case you're not familiar, I also have a book full of wire kumohimo tutorials, which is available in most places where you can buy books. But I actually also sell signed copies of it in my shop, along with jewelry kits and tutorials. Link will be in the description box down below to everything. Otherwise, if you want to learn how you can make this design, then keep watching! So these are the materials that we'll need. First of all, the wire that I'm using is a regular round copper wire and the gauge is a 0.6mm and I'm using both a copper and a silver coated one to help get the contrast for the pattern. And then I'm going to use these 8mm ribbon ends to finish off the ends of the braid and they have these little loops in them where we can attach our findings. So I'm using a lost or claw clasp, an extender chain and a few jump rings to put it all together. Now along with the ribbon ends, I'm also going to use this E6000 glue that creates a nice strong bond. And then we need a few tools as well. So first of all, I got my flush cutter so we can cut our wire. And then some tweezer or flat nose pliers to help manipulate the wire and for the jump rings. And of course we also need our square kumohimo disc as well. Now I'm just using the small one, it doesn't matter what size disc you use, you'll get the same result. Now I also recommend something like electrical tape that's going to help hold the wires together while we're braiding. So you can find the whole material list and useful links in the description box down below. Otherwise, let's get it all ready and let's get started. Then we need to cut some lengths of our wire and what I have here is 12 lengths of our 0.6mm of about 40 centimeters each. Now what I've also done is I've made sure all the ends are even and then I put them together, put some of the tape around them to hold them in place and then I just bend the ends over the top of the tape so we don't pull any other wires through as we're making our kumahima. We then need to attach our wires to a kumahima disc here so I'm going to take the end with the tape on, put it down through the hole in the middle and just keep hold of it with my fingers on the other side. Then we just need to distribute all the wires. So because we have 12 in total, we're going to end up with six on the top and six on the bottom. And I'm just going to start from one side. What we then want is for the six wires on the top and the bottom to be in the middle of the disc. So just start placing your wires into the slots. I'm just going to work my way alternating from the top and then to the bottom. and the top and the bottom, working away towards the middle of the disc and then we'll get into the middle here and then from the middle I like to just work outwards in the same way so I do the bottom and then the top so the two halves of the disc are kind of a mirrored image And then just fill in the rest of the slots here. So we end up with the six wires on the bottom in the middle and the six wires on the top in the middle. And this is then the positioning of our wires on the disc. From here we then need to start our movements to make the braid itself. So what we're going to do is start from the top middle and I'm going to focus on the two middle wires there. First of all, I'm just going to take the right one, release that from that slot, bring it out towards the left, so straight out to the side, and I like to always smooth my wire out as I'm working the kumihimo, and then bring it into the side slot there. Then I'm going to take the other middle wire, so that's the left one of the two middle ones, and then bring that out to the right. And again, place that into the slot, and make sure you straighten out the wire, smooth it out as we go. Now from here we have the gaps on the top that means we need to move the bottom ones up to the top. And you can start on either side. I'm just going to start with, again from the middle, but the left one of the two middle ones. Bring that up to the top and make sure you help it over the wire that's going out to the side. Make it nice and tight. Bring it into the top slot that's straight across from it. Then take the next one, work my way out to the side of the disc. Bring that down over the top and down into the empty slot on the bottom and then take the next one out bring that up into the top empty slot there and the last one on the top we need to bring that down and the last one on the bottom we then need to bring up so you can see the wires have now swapped position a bit and instead of having the gap in the top middle we now actually have it on the bottom left 
but we just need to repeat with the other side of the disc as well. So starting from the bottom, because we have the empty slot on the top, so grab that middle one, the right one of the middle ones, bring it up into that empty slot, grab the next one out, bring it down into the empty slot, smooth out your wires every time you move them, the next one out, bring it up, and the last one on the top, smooth it out as you bring it over, and then bring that down, and the last one on the bottom, bring that up. And now this right side of the disc looks the same as the left. But what we do have though are the two wires on the side. They need to be brought back into the braid. So whichever side you want to start with, it doesn't matter. Release that wire on the side and then just tug at it a little bit before then bringing it down into that side slot that's still empty. And then the same with the other one. So release it, smooth it out and just tug at it a little bit and then bring it down. And then we have all our wires back in the original position here. As you can see, the six in the middle on the top and the six in the middle on the bottom. And this is basically one round of our braid. And all we want to do now is repeat this. So again, start with the two middle ones on the top. And I always like to make sure I start with the same side. So I take the right one of the two middle ones, bring it out to the left. And then I take the left one of the two middle ones and bring that out to the right and into those side slots and from there we just want to continue so again I'm starting from the bottom I'm just starting on the left side it doesn't matter so take that bottom middle wire on the left bring it up and over the wire going out to the side into that top slot that's directly opposite then work your way out towards the side smooth out the wire bring it down over the wire in the middle fill in the empty slot on the bottom and then continue making your way all the way until we've used all the wires on this side here. And then we just need to repeat on the other side. So grab that middle wire on the bottom that's directly opposite the empty slot on the top and then bring it into that empty slot. Take the next one out bring it down into the empty slot repeat until we used up all these wires as well and made a movement with them the last one bring that to the top and then we are left with the ones on the side which is where we then just release one at a time tug at it a little bit and then bring it down into the empty slot on the bottom and then one on the other side tuck at it a little bit and then bring that down and we're now back in the original position again and this was then another full round so you basically just want to keep repeating this now until we have the length that we need so now I kept braiding here you can see my braid is coming out on the back and this is plenty for what we need so we can just go in and remove all the wires from the disc now As we're done with the kumihimo and then you can see the ends are a little bit wild so you can just smooth them back out and just bring them out from the end of the braid just so they don't keep getting in the way and this is then what our braid looks like so you will find that there's kind of a front and a back to this the front is a bit more flat where the back seems to have a little bit more of a curve or texture to it so the front is where I'm going to be adding the design to and to do that we need to cut a few lengths of wire we'll need to cut two lengths of a 0.6 mil wire here of about 50 centimeters each in this case I'm using a cup of color just to contrast with the braid itself we then need to attach our lengths to the braid here and I'm just going to start on one end and just taking one length of the wires at a time and what you'll find is on the braid on the outer edges we have these little loops running all the way along and there's a tiny little gap there which is just perfect for fitting these lengths of wire through so just towards one end I'm just going to put the end of the wire through one of those gaps just like that and just leave a short end on the back there that I can then just push right down up against the braid and that's one attached and then I'm just going to grab the other one and attach it on the other side but in the equivalent place so find the equivalent loop on that side there and bring the wire through that so straight through from the front to the back and again just push that short little tail downwards up against the braid 
So we now have our two lengths of wire attached and we can start the actual pattern. Now when you just start with one of the lengths of wires here, it doesn't matter what side you start on, just make sure you stay consistent. So I'm just gonna start on my left side here. And then I'm gonna go to the other side. So I'm going on to the right side of the braid. And in this case, because this is the first one that we're doing, it's a little bit different than the rest. I'm just going to count the loops from where the other wire is coming out from. I'm then gonna count one loop, two loop, and then go through the third one. So straight through like that. And then bring it all the way to the back. And then just keep pulling on it. Let's do it nice and gently. And we want to get this wire here on top of the braid nice and tight and flat against the braid. So something like that. What I'm then gonna do is straight away grab the end again of the same length of wire and then go down one loop. So the one we skipped just below where the wire is coming through and then come up from the back, back towards the front. And this bring that all the way through. And again, I wanna make sure to pull this tight so this loop on the back ends up sitting right nice and tight against the edge there. And then this wire is coming back out towards the front and it's in position for the next movement that that needs to make. But before we use that again, we need to basically do the same thing with the other one, but obviously in a mirrored image because this is on the other side. So grab the end of it. And again, I'm gonna then cross from the right side where this is coming out from over to the left, which means I'm crossing over the other wire that's over the braid there. So I'm gonna then count from the loop where that wire is coming out from skip one, skip two, and then go through the third one from the front towards the back. And again, just pull it gently all the way through until this then sits tight over the front of the braid. And we've basically now created a little cross, you can see. Take the same length of wire, go back to the end, and then go through the loop that we skipped just underneath where we're just coming out from now. And this is from back to front. So push that through. So the same thing that we did on the other side. And then we can just grab onto the end and pull it all the way through nice and gently until we also get this loop tight along the edge on the back. And there we then have this wire also in position for the next movement. And what you can also do is use your pliers along the way and kind of just help squeeze the wire down on the braid and just tighten it a bit more. And of course, at any point, if you need to, you can always use them also to help put the wire exactly in the place where you want them to sit. But now we have our wires attached and we start the pattern, we just need to continue. So again, remember, I'm starting with the left one. We're gonna cross over to the right side of the braid and we're just gonna look at the top loop where the wire is going through. We're gonna then skip one up and then go through the next one after that. So from front to back. So now in this case, we're just skipping one loop between the wires that we're going through. And again, just pull it all the way through until we get the wire on the front here. Also nice and tight against the braid. And remember, you can always use your pliers to help push it down a bit. And again, I'm then gonna take the same length of wire here that we just used, go right to the end of it, and then come through the loop just below the one we just used. So basically through the one that was skipped, again from back to front now, pull that all the way through. So again, we get it nice and tight on the back, bring it back up to the side, and then I'm gonna take the other length of wire, which is below it currently. We're gonna go from the right side where that's coming out, jump to the left side, and then remember the last loop where the wire is coming through here on this side, we need to skip the next one and go through the one after that. So push it from front to back and pull that gently all the way through until that crosses over the other wires now. So you can start to really see the pattern and then straight away, I'm gonna bring this up through the loop that we skipped to come back to the front. So it's in position for the next movement. So just pull that all the way through and pull the loop on the back nice and tight and then back out to the side where it's coming from. So this is the basic pattern that we're gonna keep doing now. So just keep repeating this. Now I do also just wanna mention, sometimes it can be a little bit tight to get the wires through these outer loops. So if I'm doing the next one here, skip one loop and then go through the one after that. In the case where it can be a little bit too tight, you just push the wire through. I like using a pair of pliers and just grabbing right on the end to help force it through basically because you can get a much better grip on the wire than you can with your fingers. And just push that through. And you can always grab onto it as well and just help pull it all the way through and pull that tight. And another tip can also be to actually cut the wire at a bit of an angle that kind of creates a little bit of a needle point, which can also make it a little bit easier to get through those loops. But otherwise, I'm gonna bring it up through the loop that we just skipped, pull it tight, and then use the other length from the right here towards the left, skip one loop in the edge, 
and then go through the next one and pull that all the way through, avoid any kinks that might be forming, and then pull that down. Bring it back up through that loop that we skipped, pull that all the way through, nice and tight, back up to the side, and then you can really start to see the pattern forming. And remember, at any point you can always use your pliers to help kind of tighten things up or just put things in the exact position that you want them to be. So just keep going like this until you have the length that you need. So now I've got the length that I need. If you then find that the wire along the back of the edges there is sticking out a bit too much, you can always just go through and kind of just push them in just to neaten it up a bit. So just go all the way along to do that if you want to. And then of course, we just need to finish off the ends of the bracelet as well. So now to finish off the ends, what we need to do is take our ribbon ends and put them on the ends here so we can then attach our findings to those. But obviously, we have too much excess braid, so we just need to get rid of that first of all. So I'm going to take my flush cutters, and then I'm just going to, on one end, cut from one side of the braid, just straight across to the other side, just a bit at a time, until we end up with a straight line like that, where the ribbon end is then going to fit just perfectly over the end of that. And you then want to measure the length and then cut the other end as well. We then need to grab our glue and I'm just going to take a bit and add it onto a toothpick. We don't need too much, just enough to basically go inside of the ribbon end and just cover the inside walls. We don't need to fill it up completely because the braid is going to go in there and the excess is just going to come spilling out. So just make sure to cover the walls and then what I have excess left on the toothpick I like to just put on the end of the actual braid and just make sure to get it in between some of the wires in the nooks and crannies so that when we put the two pieces together and the glue dries, they'll adhere nicely. And then take the ribbon end, place it over the end of the braid and I like to just hold it in my hand and put a finger on either side of the ribbon end while I then take my pliers and start to squeeze it down. Now I'm gonna go almost all the way tight and then I'm just gonna check that it's still in the middle before I then go in and do my final squeeze to make sure it gets nice and tight. And I also like to just go in from the side, close those up. And here we have our ribbon end attached and we now have the loop there where we can attach our findings. Of course, you wanna do the same thing on the other end, let them dry. And then we just need to shape the bracelet so we can wear it. So you can go in and start to put a curve into it. Obviously make sure the front of the bracelet is facing outward. Go from side to side and gradually add more and more of a curve until the two ends are close together so we can use the clasp. You can also shape it around something that has the size and shape you want it to have, like a bracelet mandrel, but otherwise you can just use your hands and fingers. And once you can then use your clasp, you have your bracelet finished and ready to wear. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial for this woven wire Kumohimo bracelet. Now, if you like wire Kumohimo, I have loads more tutorials on my channel. And also don't forget about my book that might be of interest to you. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.